So now that we've got our MIDI keyboard hooked up and we've got our software synth, the Tell Noise Maker installed, we're ready to make some music with it. So how do we play a software instrument? Well, on the track we just created, the synth track, we're going to double check the input because I think I was doing something at the end of the last video. Yeah, so I want to make sure the MIDI input is my actual keyboard which is connected to my babyface midi port and again i'm going to choose all channels because that is the best way to make sure that you're not going to run into any problems with your midi now what i need to do is i'm going to click on the effects button and we're going to go look for the tell noisemaker plugin so i know it's going to be under instruments and there we go tell noisemaker so i'll double click and boom there it is Next thing I need to do is I'll arm the track and we'll make sure the MIDI's working. Just gonna, okay, that's good. I see that there is some signal coming up right here. So that's what we wanna see, but why is there no sound? Well, we actually need to do something new that we haven't done before. And that's turn on something called input monitoring. And that's this little icon right here in the track panel. It looks kind of like a speaker. It's just a light, light gray. We're going to turn that on, just one click, record monitoring on, and now we're going to play the keyboard again, and we should hear the Tal Noisemaker. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so that's all working, but why didn't we have to use our direct monitoring software or change anything on our audio interface? Well, that's because the sound is actually being made inside Reaper and not actually in our MIDI keyboard. So. Reaper, in a sense, is playing back this sound as we are using MIDI to tell it what notes to play. So now we actually get to have some fun and choose a sound. So at the top of the Tell Noisemaker window, you can choose from any number of presets from this dropdown, and there are a lot of them. I'm actually going to look for one called PD Spooky Organ. So that's going to be way down here at the bottom. Feel free to try any of these out. Some of them are pretty crazy. Here we go, spooky organ. Let's, let's hear that, make sure that's the one I want. That's what I'm looking for. So that sounds good. Now there's no record level or no input gain to set with MIDI because we're just recording data, we're just recording information. So the only levels we need to set are our monitoring levels or our headphone levels. So we can literally just use the fader on the track to bring it up or down, depending on what we need to. So I'm going to play a bit of the song here. I'm just going to start it right at the intro, and I'm going to just get a level on that. When I say get a level, I mean a monitoring level so that I can play along with the song. Bring it down a little bit. bit higher the that should be good okay so now I've got a good monitoring level I'm gonna make sure okay yes my metronome is on so I will get my two bar count in I wanted to make sure of that so I am ready to record so I'm just gonna make sure I'm right at the beginning of the song and I'm gonna use the W key or the home key to go back to the beginning I'm gonna move this just a little out of the way and I'm going to use Control R to start recording, or Command R on a Mac. We'll get this done, and we'll see you in a moment. Okay, I've recorded my MIDI performance, but I did make a mistake. With MIDI, I don't need to replay the part. I don't need to punch in for the part. I can actually go and edit the notes within the MIDI editor. So let's double click on the MIDI region and open up our MIDI editor. Now, if yours doesn't look exactly like this, don't worry about that. 
make sure that you are on the piano roll view. If it looks like this, it's drum edit view. We don't need that. We actually want to do the piano roll view for this purpose. And this basically lets us see all the notes we played. And all these little boxes represent the keys played, the notes actually played. And of course, the notes up here, this one, for example, represents this E. This one is a B. So you can just follow along that way. So the higher they are in the grid, the higher pitch the note, the lower they are, the lower the pitch the note. Now, I know that my mistake was in the first chorus about halfway through, kind of hit the wrong thing. So I can, I can zoom in. And as you can see, actually, along the top here, we have all the same region markers as we do in our main window. So it's very easy and very quick to navigate. So I'm going to just zoom in, just using the scroll wheel like usual. And I can see exactly what it is. I hit this. And let's just hear that. I hit an F and I wanted to hit an E. It's not horrible, but I don't want it to be this da da. I just want it to da da. So I'm going to zoom in a little more. And what I can do is select the note I want to get rid of just by clicking on it, hit the delete key, and our bad note is gone. Now we have an empty space. And to fill that, I can grab this note and click and drag it out to the beginning of the bar. So now let's hear that section again. That's what I want to hear. This sound is a little bit crazy, but that that's now playing the note I want to hear. So it's very easy to go in and tweak, edit, delete, change. If I wanted to as well, I can also change the pitch of this note. Just understand that it's easy to click and drag and change the length by grabbing the front of the note or the end and changing the, the note by just bringing it up and down. So there's one other really cool thing we can do with MIDI, and that is quantize the notes to the grid. And you'll notice here that not all the notes start and end right on the actual bar lines. In fact, if I just move down here, you can see there's just, I mean, they're pretty close, but they're not perfect. And quantizing will help to make that a little tighter to the grid. So we're going to go up here to the Q button, quantize. And we're going to select manual. We want to quantize all notes in the entire thing, regardless of where they are, not just because we have them selected. And we want to select our grid quarter notes. I know I didn't play anything faster than a quarter note. And then we also have this control right here, which is strength. And this determines how close to the grid it's going to get. So if I make this 100%, we're going to have a perfect performance where every single note happens perfectly on a quarter note in the song. Now, that could sound a little mechanical, depending on the source material and the song. So I'm, I'm actually going to relax this just a little bit, maybe down to about, how about 73%? That seems good to me. Because that'll just leave a little bit of feel in it. Now I just click OK. And everything now is just that little bit closer to the grid. The last thing I want to look at is that some notes are a little bit louder than others and jump out. I'm just going to zoom back here. And that's what this area at the bottom is here. This shows us the velocity or how hard I hit the key. So the higher the bar, the louder the note is. So some of these notes like this one right here might jump out a bit and I can just grab this click and drag and pull it down into place. Uh, another example might be, this one might be a little quiet. I can pull this up. So the quiet notes are green by default. In fact, all the way down to the bottom, they're kind of a light green. And the loudest notes go all the way to a red. So it's nice to see some fluctuation in this. That's going to create a more human feel if that's what you're going for. If you want something that's exceptionally steady, then you can select all your notes and make them all the exact same velocity.
if we wanted to do that, we would just select everything by using the Control A or Command A. We can bring these all up to the top, and now they're all the same velocity, but I don't want that. So luckily, Control Z or Command Z is our friend, and it will undo what I just did. And now we have a great performance. We could try out some different sounds with Tell Noise Maker just to see if we prefer a different sound. So I'm going to close this, go back to the beginning of the song, open up the plug-in window here, our Tell Noise Maker, and what we can do while the song is playing is try out some different sounds. So have fun, try the different sounds inside Tell Noise Maker, find something you like, and then we're ready for our next step.